So, uh, hi, Sandra here. It's Sunday. I'm in my kitchen and I'm going to be putting together the guacamole that I told you I was going to put together. Um, it's difficult to film in this kitchen um, because I don't have cupboards or anything and it just look to me it just looks messy so I'm not gonna bother like showing you my kitchen but I can show you this section here right so cutting board mortar and pestle I know this is uh, not a traditional one but I couldn't get a traditional one I couldn't find one and I know people are gonna but I've looked for one for years and um, anyway so I got this at Costco I know it's not um, off the authentic one but it works really really well so anyway you gotta use what you can so anyway um, avocados um, I use some um, uh, cebolla morados, hi, <laughs> moradas, because um, which are the sort of the purple onions because I like the taste of them the best. But a lot of people, the traditional way of, is the white onions, but I much prefer um, I much prefer the taste, and I use them for everything. So I'd rather just buy one type of onion because my space is limited. So do what you can, use what you want, but I use the uh, the purple onions. What are they called? I don't know what they're called. Um, I normally would use uh, serrano chilies seeds in because I like it um, spicy. But sometimes those serranos are spicy, sometimes they're not. And if you, if I get lucky, I get lucky. Sometimes I'll use two just to get the spice. Um, but that's me. You, some people, um, most people would use jalapenos, which is the again more traditional. I just uh, know what I like and I do what I like. Coriander is essential for this, and I know there's people that can't eat coriander, um, so you don't have to put it in. But when I ran out of coriander, I was um, at one house that we were living in. I um, had basil in the garden. I know it sounds really weird. But it is a very exotic tasting guacamole and I really enjoyed it and Daniel really enjoyed it also. So that is um, a really nice substitute that you can put in and try it. You might like it, you might hate it, but that's what I did when I ran out of cilantro because I need to have something in there just to give it that oomph. So um, cilantro, serrano, um, cebolla morada, um, and I usually use bola tomatoes but I really like uh, hothouse tomatoes. We can't always get them here. Um, cherry tomatoes I use, grape tomatoes I've used in the past, but they're a little, I find a little too sweet for the guacamole, so I, I don't really want to overpower it. And tomato is not the most essential part. Obviously, it's the avocado and then the mixture of the rest. Um, what I also do is I, because if I, let's say you only have one cutting board, I happen to have a few, but I still living out of boxes because of the, the size issue and I still have stuff at, in my storage, long story. Anyway, so, um, what was I saying? So, um, okay, so you only have, let's say you only have one cutting board and you want it to make it easy. I always cut the dry ingredients first because if you cut, say, your tomatoes first, it wets the whole cutting board and then the cilantro will stick to it and it's just a mess. So I start with the cilantro because it is the driest. Chop that up and then push it to the side and then I'll do my chilies because that's the next least wet. It's actually not really wet at all. And then what I will do is, um, is the onion and then I actually start mixing it all up and then put the tomato in last because you don't want to use this on your tomato because it'll just smush it. Whereas the other stuff you want to, to get it crunchy and so all of the oils and the flavors come out together and that's where you get really, really powerful flavor. Um, I used to make this all the time in just a plain bowl with a fork. That's great as well. But once I got this, I will never ever use anything else, ever. So, unless I have to. Um, and then lime and salt. Lime is essential, salt is essential. Everything that I'm telling you is essential for this to make it work. Um, and then you can use substitutes, uh, i.e. the onion, the type of chili, you can use habaneros, which I actually used one time when I was out of Serrano's and that was really nice as well. Um, and most people will take the seeds out, but I like the seeds in. I like it as spicy as, as you know, not 
like my angry shrimp salad spicy but you know just have a little little kick um, if I were making it for guests I would probably take the seeds out unless I asked them beforehand um, but I'm just making it for myself at this point so I make it the way I like it um, okay so let's get started hi it is actually Sunday the other video that I um, I did was actually a few days ago and I was thinking I could do it on Sunday a whole new one but the logistics just didn't work. Um, once I finished that video and realized I couldn't make the guacamole because of the space, um, I said, well, let me just cut it here and see if I can work with it. So I'm, the reason I um, am not doing it all over again is because I explained uh, the molcajete in uh, the mortal and pestle and my process. So today I'm just going to, this morning, I'm just going to assemble it and see if that works. Okay, so we've got the mortar and pestle. I've already done the guacamole. Um, I was fortunate enough to know that these were excellent. Look, I got all the meat out, which was amazing. I used three, and these are pretty small. I don't know if you can see. These are pretty small ones. Sometimes I get the really large ones and I can just use two. Um, so I used three small ones. I have um, cut up the lime. I've used half the lime already and squirted it in here and salted just a little bit. And then what I do, I have to move this, is I scrape, I've already done my my cilantro, my serrano seeds in and the uh, cebolla marada, or I have actually looked it up, they're called red onions. I don't know why, they look purple to me. Um, so I'm gonna scrape those in there and leave my tomatoes. The whole process, um, I um, wrote the blog last night, I edited it, and it will be available today if you want the recipe, and I describe exactly what I do in each step. Um, I know a lot of you make guacamole and don't need my help, but for those of you who want a new recipe or the reasons behind what I do what I do, great. So I try to get in here. I know you can't see that well, but anyway, it's all in there. Um, I mix it up really well, get some of that juice out of the onions and the cilantro, and it just gets a lot of flavor. And another reason I didn't want to do this was the noise. <laughs> when I was doing the, um, the avocado, it was, it can be pretty loud, and um, I just don't know how nice that would be uh, to film that. Okay, so there's a lot on here. I use a little spatula, scrape it all off, try to get as much as possible. And um, need salt and lime, which is expected. So we're going to use the rest of the lime. You may not always use um, the total lime. I like mine with uh, kind of a limey flavor. So it's a personal preference. Once you make it a few times, you know. Scrape the tomato in there. Put that in the, the sink. Mix that up, and I'll show it to you once I've got some. This came out pretty smooth. I, I prefer my guacamole um, to be smooth as opposed to, but there's a few chunks in there, and I'm going to try to show you. You can see there's a few, there's a few chunks in there, but it's a nice, um, it's a nice mixture. It's a nice texture. I need some salt sea salt from Costco. A lot of stuff I get at Costco because, you know, it's not like we have a huge variety here. When I moved here, we only had um, one supermarket called Arambaro. Now we have like 14. No, I'm just kidding. We have a few. Okay, so guacamole is done. Beautiful color. You can see nice and green. Grab one of the chippies. Anyway, have a great Sunday. Mmm. Delish. Bye. Have a great day.